Hello, everyone. I'm Zoe. When I was a baby, my mom left me outside of a hospital. I never saw my biological parents after that. I got adopted when I was two years old. My new parents were amazing. They never made me feel like I was adopted. They made sure I had a wonderful childhood. But when I was 14, we all got into a terrible car accident on our way to go camping. I was the only one who survived. My life suddenly turned upside down. I had to move to a group home. Most of the other kids there were around my age. Children usually get adopted at a younger age. Of course, that makes sense. Who wants to adopt a teenager? Adoptive parents generally prefer younger children so they can raise them however they want. I was there for almost a year. One morning, I was told the director wanted to see me. When I walked into his office, I saw that he was there with a woman. She stood up abruptly when she saw me. She stared at me. She seemed surprised. Without taking her eyes off me, she said, Mr. Brown, let's proceed with the adoption. That's when I realized this was an adoption meeting. My legs started shaking. She said, welcome to our family. I can't wait for you to start calling me mom, and gave me a hug. Even though I was really excited, something about her seemed off. She was supposed to come pick me up the next day. I was waiting in the front yard with my friends. I was watching the street. All of a sudden, we heard a loud noise coming from above. We looked up and saw a helicopter. I've never seen one so close. We watched as it landed on an empty lot next to our building. <gasps> then someone got out and started running towards us. I couldn't believe my eyes when I realized that it was my new mother. In the next couple of days, I would find out that I was adopted by a billionaire family who got around the city in a helicopter and traveled elsewhere in their private jet. But because I didn't know this at the time, being picked up in a helicopter was a huge surprise. After a 30-minute flight, we arrived at a property outside of the city. It was surrounded by high walls. There was a huge mansion in the middle with various small buildings around it. A luxury car came to get me and took me to one of those small buildings. When I walked in, a woman in a maid's costume welcomed me. She was staring at my face in shock. She looked paralyzed. When I blurted out, is this where I'll be staying? She collected herself. She said, I'll show you to your room, ma'am. I followed her. She left me in the room for a few hours before coming back. Miss Abby is waiting for you. Was Abby my new mother's name? I didn't even know. It wasn't. It turned out Miss Abby was in charge of my education. She looked super strict. She handed me a piece of paper. It was a class schedule. Appearance class from 9 to 11 a.m. Speaking class from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Behavior class from 2 to 4 p.m. She realized I had no idea what was going on and said, these are your special preparatory classes. You'll be able to join the family once you complete this program. When she said, we also request that you go by the name Nicole instead of Zoe. I was taken aback. Why? I asked. In a formal tone, she said, this is yet another condition you must fulfill in order to join the family. I didn't quite get what was happening, but I didn't like the sound of this. And I didn't even know that this was only the beginning. The next morning, the first class was appearance. There was a hairdresser. The guy cut my hair down to my shoulders. Then he dyed it light brown. When the hairdresser left, Miss Abby said, Nicole, from now on, this will be your hairstyle. You will measure the length every morning. Once it grows an extra inch, you will call the hairdresser. You will come and cut it to the required length. This was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever heard, but I didn't want to cause any trouble on my first day, so I kept quiet. The next class was speaking. Miss Abby gave me a handout. There were many words on it. Nicole, memorize all these words. We want you to start using them more frequently in your daily conversations. I took a look at the sheet. It contained words like cringe, stan, bestie, pressed, vibes, cap. Why do I need to use these? I asked. Nicole, please start memorizing them now. We're expecting you not to ask questions, but to do what we ask. She snapped. The third class was behavior. I learned a bunch of nonsense there as well. For example, I wasn't supposed to get up before 10 a.m., but I actually like waking up early. Even if I were to wake up early, I had to stay in bed until 10. There was another absurd rule about crying. When Miss Abby said, you will not cry under any circumstances, I replied, well, I can't promise that. A person has a right to cry if they feel like it. You can't forbid it. Miss Abby frowned and said, this is very important. You are not to cry even when you're alone. My studies went on like this for several days. I ended up focusing on the classes because, honestly, there was nothing else for me to do. 
Miss Abby taught me a million weird things. For example, if my new father talked about work at dinner, I would have to roll my eyes and say, Daddy, come on. I had to listen to music while I was showering, and of course, there was a list of songs I could choose from. I didn't know why, but I wasn't allowed to listen to music outside of the shower. One day at the end of class, Miss Abby said, Nicole, I want to thank you for the effort you put into this. You have successfully completed your studies. Tomorrow, you will move into your room at the main residence and live there from now on. Take this notebook. It has everything that you need to know. If you deviate from the rules, you'll move back here and we'll start studying from scratch. I was so happy to find out these classes were finally over. I'd begun thinking that this weird program would go on forever. Can you tell me why I learned all this? I asked. With her usual stern expression, Miss Abby said, You will find out soon enough. The next day, they took me to the mansion. My new room was massive and decorated in pink. I opened the closet. It was full of clothes that were mentioned in class. Was this place prepared for me? I looked around carefully. I went through everything. In the end, I figured out this room belonged to someone else, but for some reason, I had inherited it. After a while, a maid showed up. Miss Nicole, your mother and father are expecting you at the White Hall, she said. I followed her. At the same time, I was going through the things I'd learned so that I wouldn't make a mistake. Everything in the White Hall was white. When I walked in, my new mom and dad stood up. My dad was looking at me as if he was under a spell. Then he gave me a hug and started sobbing. At the same time, he was saying, Nicole, my sweet girl, my little daffodil, you see we're together again. Then my mom hugged me. I was trying to understand what was happening. What did my new dad mean when he said, you see, we're together again? Just then I noticed a giant painting on the wall. It was a portrait of a girl in a white dress, just as the room called for. She looked so much like me that at first glance, I thought they had commissioned a portrait of me. But of course, it wasn't me. I turned to my new mom. I asked, who is this? It's you, darling. It's your portrait. It's been hanging there for a year. Who else could it be? She answered. I didn't understand. I looked at my new dad. Nicole, do you want to go horse riding tomorrow morning? I missed riding with you, he said. The atmosphere in the room was so weird. I could sense that I had to do something, but I had no idea what to do. What did this all mean? Why were they acting like I had always lived in this house? I started to cry. My new mom said, Nicole, why are you crying? Didn't Miss Abby teach you that you're not supposed to cry? You never cry. And hearing this, I began to cry even harder. My name is not Nicole. My name is Zoe, and I'm a crier. I might even be the biggest crybaby in the world. I cry at everything. I don't understand what you're trying to do, but I'm not Nicole. I'm Zoe, I said. My new mom grabbed my arm. Your name is Nicole. You might have been someone else in the past, but from now on, you are Nicole. Tomorrow, you're resuming your studies with Miss Abby. It looks like the program wasn't quite enough for you, she screamed. I looked at my new dad. He was crying, but he wasn't looking at me. He was looking at the painting. Then he turned to my new mom. Leave her alone. She's not Nicole. She's not our daughter. Nicole is dead. No one can replace her. We can't bring our daughter back. You can't turn someone into Nicole just because she looks like her. Nicole is dead and no one can bring her back now, he said and started sobbing. His wife went and hugged him for some time. They began sobbing together. Four months passed after that night. You might be thinking that I went back to the group home. No, I'm still living with my new mom and dad because they came to my room the next morning. They admitted their mistake. They apologized to me. Our suffering clouded our thinking. We can now see how irrational it was to try to get you to do something like that, they said. Their daughter Nicole had been diagnosed with leukemia two years ago. The disease had already progressed too far. The treatments didn't work and unfortunately Nicole passed away last year. Because they didn't have any other children, they were incredibly distraught. They were both severely (laughs) depressed. They were looking for a way to deal with the situation, and that's how they came up with this crazy idea. They looked for someone who looked like Nicole in all the group homes across the country. Finally, they found me. You already know the rest. They made my hair like hers. They dressed me like her. They tried to make me speak and act like her. I know it sounds preposterous, but they wanted to turn me into Nicole. However, that evening, they finally realized this was not possible. Hi, everyone. I'm Aria. My name has become very popular thanks to the TV show Game of Thrones. But there's an interesting story behind how I got this name. Aria means air in Italian. So why was I named Air? Because I was born on an airplane, and that was the name chosen by the Italian pilot. You heard that right. 
I was born 16 years ago on board an airplane in the middle of a transatlantic flight. According to official records, the odds of being born on an airplane are 1 in 26 million. There have been nearly 50 babies born in the air so far. Of course, these were all unexpected births. My mom was on her way to visit my grandmother who had broken her hip. But for whatever reason, I decided to enter this world during her trip and became one of those 50 babies. Even though there were a lot of mishaps during my birth, I'm so happy that I was born on a plane because I have an interesting birth story. And also, the airline gifted me a golden ticket. Thanks to this, I can fly anywhere in the world for free. Now, let me tell you my story from the beginning. My parents are both mining engineers. At the time, they were working at a gold mine in India. My mom was planning to give birth to me there. But when my grandmother, who lived in New York, fell down the stairs and broke her hip, my mom wanted to go right away because there was nobody else that could look after her. Airlines have different policies when it comes to pregnant passengers. The airline my mom was flying allowed women to fly until they were 38 weeks pregnant. Because my mom was 36 weeks or eight months pregnant at the time, she had no trouble buying a ticket. My mom says I was already very active earlier that day. Five hours after takeoff, she suddenly started getting labor pains. At first, she thought it was due to stress. But after a while, when the contractions began, she called one of the flight attendants. She said, I have bad news for you. I think I'm going to have a baby. They immediately moved my mom up to first class. The captain came over to her shortly after. He said, we're currently flying close to the polar circle. We can't possibly do an emergency landing. Will you be okay for the next four hours? My mom was getting worried and told him, my contractions are getting closer together. That means labor is going to start in 15 to 20 minutes. The chief flight attendant made an announcement saying, we have a passenger who's about to go into labor. Is there a doctor on board? When no one answered, she tried again, this time saying, a passenger is having a baby in 15 minutes. Is there a doctor, a nurse, a midwife, or even a pharmacist? Anyone who's in healthcare. One of the passengers said, my daughter is in medical school. She's very scared, but I think there's a chance she may be able to help you. The girl was so nervous. She snapped at her mother saying, mom, I'm just in my third year. I've never even seen anyone give birth. You probably know more about it than I do. You've at least done it yourself. But when the chief flight attendant said, I understand, but you're the only person on this plane who knows anything about healthcare. Please help us. She had no choice but to say yes. They cleared the first class section to prepare for labor. As you know, first class seats can turn into comfortable beds. Flight attendants converted that space into a small hospital room and laid my mom down. Then they brought hot water and towels, just like in the movies. But just when they thought everything was okay, they realized that the medical student had disappeared. After searching for a while, they found her hiding in the bathroom. She'd locked herself in there because she was so scared. Her mom went to the bathroom door and started begging her. They finally convinced her to come out. When she was finally brought to first class, she was crying and saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. My mom had been pretty calm until then. When she saw the girl, she started crying too. The chief flight attendant saw that things were getting out of hand and decided to take control of the situation. First of all, she sent the girl back to her seat. Then she turned to my mom and said the magic word, push. Once my mom heard that, she stopped crying and started pushing. And sure enough, shortly after, she gave birth to me. All the passengers on the plane were waiting anxiously. The pilot's announcement broke the silence. Ladies and gentlemen, we realize there's a stowaway on board because her name is not on the passenger list. In fact, this little passenger doesn't even have a name. With her mother's permission, I've named her Aria. It means air in my mother tongue. I want to extend a warm welcome to Aria who was born in the air. Relieved by the pilot's announcement, the passengers broke into applause. The captain called my dad on his cell phone to give him the news and then put my mom on. Because there were no <laughs> video calls back then, dad was only able to listen to my crying. After landing, they took my mom and me straight to the hospital. The doctor examined us and said there was nothing wrong with either of us. 
My dad came to New York the following week. When he went to deal with the paperwork, the official asked him about my place of birth. When dad said, Aria was born on a plane, she was surprised. She told him, unfortunately, in the air is not one of the options. The closest one is at sea. We can put that if you like. My dad had to say yes to that. So my passport says I was born at sea. I love showing it to people and saying, actually, I wasn't born at sea, but in the air and telling them how it happened. That is my birth story. Now let me tell you about my golden ticket. As I said earlier, I can fly anywhere in the world for free. About a month after I was born, the airline called my parents and invited them to their headquarters. The general manager explained that there are some superstitions in aviation, just like in seafaring. Apparently, it's a very good sign when a baby is born on a plane. He said they were going to rename the plane I was born on after my mother. Then he added, and we will give Aria a golden ticket so she can travel on our planes for free for the rest of her life. Which, of course, made my parents really happy. You might have heard before that babies born in the air fly everywhere for free, but that's not exactly true for every baby. Yes, there are lucky babies like me who get the golden ticket, but there is no set rule about it. If the airline wants to give them a golden ticket, they do. If they choose not to, no one asks them why they didn't. One more thing. Some airlines that give out golden tickets announce it publicly and others don't. For example, our airline chose not to make an announcement. I know some of you might be jealous of me. You might be thinking, I wish my mom gave birth to me in the air. Just think about it. If I decided to go to Japan today, I could get on a plane tonight and be in Tokyo tomorrow. This really is an incredible opportunity, but of course it's not as simple as that. Yes, the flight might be free, but if I don't have enough money for other expenses like hotels and food, there's no point for me going to Tokyo. Also, because I can't travel alone, either my mom or my dad needs to come with me, and of course, they need to pay for their own plane tickets. This is why I haven't been able to use my golden ticket much so far. Now I'm looking forward to turning 18. After finishing high school, I won't start college right away. First, I will go on a trip around the world for a year. I want to visit at least 50 countries. I'll be waitressing wherever I go to make money, so I'll be working and traveling at the same time. Besides, some days I'll be sleeping on the plane instead of paying for a hotel room. Hi, everyone. I'm Aiden. I'm going through the worst time of my life. I know this sounds awful, but I spent all of my parents' money on mobile games. I really wish I hadn't. I want to tell you my story so you won't make the same mistakes as me. On my 13th birthday, my parents presented me with a huge (laughs) gift box. My dad said, Aiden, we love you so much. You really deserve this present. I opened the box right away. It was a PlayStation 4. For most kids my age, this would have been a dream gift. But I wasn't happy. I told my parents, you don't know me at all. When was the last time you saw me playing a video game? Of course, that really hurt them. Back then, I wasn't into video games at all. For me, sitting in front of a screen and hitting buttons for hours seemed really stupid. I looked down on gamers. I was angry at my parents for thinking I was one of those kids. Obviously, they didn't deserve such a reaction. My parents aren't rich, so I was aware that it wasn't easy for them to get me such an expensive gift. But as I said earlier, for some reason, I used to hate video games back then. After a few weeks, when my dad saw that I didn't even touch that PlayStation, he sold it on eBay. I liked playing outside. My best friend Sean lived nearby. We'd always hang out together. Back then, I didn't even have a cell phone, but Sean had not only a phone, but also a tablet and a laptop. But he wasn't into video games either. We'd usually play basketball in his backyard or ride our bikes around the lake. One day, something happened. We were racing each other to the lake. The road was slippery and Sean lost control of his bike and crashed into a tree. He was taken to a hospital where the doctors found fractures in both of his legs. That meant he wouldn't be able to get out of bed for a long time. I visited Sean every day after school. We usually watched something online. Meanwhile, Sean got into Minecraft as a way to pass the time. He got hooked really quickly. He would keep playing even while I was visiting him. So I would just sit there and watch him. I'd heard of Minecraft, but I had no idea what it was all about. It was a really fun game. Just like Sean, I was quickly hooked. I would rush to his place after school. 
and we'd played Minecraft together for hours. I really wanted to play at home as well, but the only electronic device I owned was a laptop I got from my cousin when he went away to college, and it was too old for Minecraft. I had to find another solution fast. My dad is an ambulance driver, and my mom is a nurse in the emergency room. Their jobs required both of them to work several night shifts each week. Because they were so tired from working all night, they spent almost all day sleeping. One morning, I ran into my mom as I was leaving for school. She was coming home from her shift. I'm so exhausted, I need to get some sleep, she said, and gave me a kiss. I went to Sean's after school. We played Minecraft for hours, as usual. Then I came home. My mom was still asleep. I realized that I could play Minecraft on her phone. I couldn't see her phone lying around, so I went into her bedroom. My mom is a deep sleeper. She didn't hear me come in. I took her phone and went back to my room. I unlocked her phone because I knew her code and downloaded the trial version of Minecraft. I played all night. I was in such a good mood, I decided I would play whenever my mom was asleep. But the trial version was only good for a month. What would happen then? I couldn't ask my parents to buy me the game after the way I reacted when they bought me the PlayStation. For days after my birthday, I would tease them, saying, what will you get me next year, an Xbox or a Nintendo? <laughs> now there was no way I could ask them to buy me Minecraft. I checked the Play Store to see how much it cost. It wasn't that expensive. I could hit buy and download it just like that. I could barely stop myself. I was wondering if my mom was checking all the transactions on her credit card statement. It wouldn't be a big purchase. She might not even notice it. I decided to go for it. I pressed buy. However, I got an alert on the phone saying, confirm fingerprint to continue. No way! It turned out I needed my mom's fingerprint to complete the payment process, and only my mom could do that. I was devastated that I couldn't buy the game, but that was it. I had to go back to playing Minecraft. At least, I could keep playing the trial version for a month. Then, unfortunately, I had a terrible idea. I could just use my mom's finger while she was sleeping. I was sure she wouldn't even notice and sleep through it. Once my grandmother called my mom while she was sleeping after working the night shift, she didn't hear her phone even though it was right next to her. Finally, I went into the bedroom and answered it myself. You see, when my mom works the night shift, she goes into this really deep sleep the next day, and I was going to take advantage of that. I went into the bedroom. Mom was sleeping like a baby. I took her finger very carefully and pressed it against the phone. Bingo! The purchase went through. My mom was still sleeping. That day, I was so proud of myself for thinking of this, but I really regret it now. Sean had soon recovered from his accident, but we weren't going outside anymore because we were both addicted to games. All we did was play. Sean's family was well off, so he didn't have the same problems with money. He could buy any game he wanted. He could also do as many in-game purchases as he liked. I, on the other hand, was only able to play the free games. One night, I was playing Clash of Clans on my mom's phone. I was really annoyed. I couldn't get to the same level as Sean because I couldn't spend money. I decided to do the same thing I did for Minecraft. My mom had worked the night before, so she was passed out. I could pull off the same trick again. And I did. I went into her bedroom. I took my mom's finger gently and pressed it against the phone, just like the last time the payment went through. Clash of Clans cost quite a bit more than Minecraft. But still, my mom didn't say anything about it. Apparently, she wasn't checking her credit card transactions. I was relieved when I realized I wasn't going to get caught. There was another game I was curious about. It was time to buy that one. Do I need to spell it out? I used the same method, and it was as easy as pie. For a while, I didn't buy anything else, but I couldn't stop myself for long. It was as if I had the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other. The devil kept saying, it's so easy. You can spend as much money on games as you want. Go ahead, do it. Pushing me to do it again, the angel was saying, if you get caught, your family would be so upset. This is wrong. Don't waste money on games. As you might have guessed, I listened to the devil. That night, I bought four more games. I was now just like Sean. I could spend as much money as I wanted. I was feeling so great about myself. My mom doesn't know much about technology, but I still wanted to be careful. I put all the games I downloaded on her phone into a folder. Then, using an app, I set a password to protect the folder, so my mom would never be able to see any games on her phone. From then on, I completely lost control. I was looking forward to my mom's night shifts. I was buying 20 different games while she was asleep. 
I was spending hundreds of dollars each time and my poor mom had no idea. I bought a ton of games over several months. Because of my parents' night shifts, we almost never ate dinner together. One night, all three of us were at the table. My mom looked really happy. She said, Aiden, we have important news for you. Your dad and I quit our jobs at the hospital today. We're planning to start a retirement home. We are going to have a family business. I was so surprised. My dad smiled and said, This was our biggest dream. We've been saving for this for years and we've finally found the courage to go through with it. I was getting really excited too. I said, This is great news and hugged them both. But the next day when I came home, my mom was crying. I said, Mom, what's wrong? She didn't answer. My dad was so angry with me. You destroyed us. How could you do something so irresponsible? I'm going to disown you. You cannot be my son. You're not my son, he yelled. I didn't know what he was talking about. I said, Mom, what's going on? My mom explained, We went to the bank today. We wanted to get some money to incorporate our business. But you spent all the money we've saved on games. Because it was a debit card, I wasn't receiving any statements from the bank. We were shocked when the bank clerk said I had only $37 in my account. I couldn't believe it. I said, Mom, I couldn't have spent all of the money. What's a debit card? How is it different from a credit card? Mom said, Unlike a credit card, a debit card has no spending limit. The debit card that was linked to the Play Store was directly connected to my bank account. All of our money was in that account. You spent it all. We just quit our jobs. What are we going to do now? And started crying again. Even though this sounds incredible, this is exactly what happened. I spent all the money my family has worked for years to save on mobile games. My parents have refused to talk to me since that day. Even if they're able to forgive me one day, I know I will always feel guilty. I still can't believe I was able to do something so terrible.